Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. So hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming back. Now we are going to, uh, to, to talk about bringing Windows applications to Linux app stores with Wine Snaps. I'm going to leave the floor to uh, Lucy Luelen. And also, Merlin Sebrecht. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, my name is Merlin. I am uh, part of the Core Snap Cluster team. Um, and uh, I'm also part of the Russian Community Council. Um, during my day job, I teach at Ghent University and I'm a researcher at IMAX. I'm Lucy. Uh, I'm a core snap crafter. Uh, uh, in other work I do, uh, I sit on the Ubuntu membership board. Uh, we approve new Ubuntu members for sustained and significant contributions to the Ubuntu community. Uh, I'm a Microsoft MVP based on WSL work and uh, I have lots of experience in Ubuntu and snaps. So, um I'm first going to talk about uh, what Snap Crafter is specifically, because we're both Snap Crafters. Um, then I'm going to talk about a very simple introduction, how to Snap Windows applications. And Lucy is going to talk about the history of snapping Windows applications. Uh, then I'm going to do a deep dive into uh, how this project actually works. Lucy is, uh, I'm going to talk about a few useful tools for creating snaps of, window of Windows applications. And Lucy will be talking about uh, a few useful tools to create snap applications in general. So, Snap Crafters itself, um, this project is under the Snap Crafters umbrella, and we are a group of volunteers uh, who create snap packages to easily install first party applications on Linux. So, the idea is that the Snap Store. Uh, the idea of the Snap Store is that developers themselves can plug public applications into the store, but if developers don't want to do that or uh, uh, don't want to do that yet, then Snap Crafters can maintain some applications into the Snap Store. Um, currently, we're maintaining 37 Snaps with a team of 32 volunteers, um, and all these Snaps combined have over uh, 1.5 million usually active users. Um, across. 70, uh, uh, 67 distributions. And I checked this because I was incredibly surprised by how many different distributions there are. I didn't even know there were uh, 57 different distributions, let alone ones that uh, run our application. And so Snap Crackers is the umbrella under which we are creating tooling for uh, snapping Windows applications. So, how does this work? First, I have to talk a little bit about it's not working right now. First, I have to talk a little bit about how Snap applications, uh, how you can create Snaps themselves. Um, so you start with a, a snapcraft.yaml file. Um, in this file, which you see here, Test, test, test. So this seems to be working again. Yeah, right? Which one? This one more. This, this one? This one more. Yeah, test. This one. I'm not sure. So I have to, I have to. Yeah. This one seems to be working. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That one is, yeah. All right. So you start with an, yeah. yeah. You start with a snapcraft.yaml file which basically describes everything that's required to build and run your application. You run the snapcraft command which creates the snap, which is an installer for your application. Um, you push it to the store using snapcraft push, um, and then it is available into the store under, for example, snapcraft.io slash kcalc. Um, then users can install the snaps very easily just by running sudo snap install kcalc. However, when you go and look into the snap store, you will see that there's a bunch of Windows applications in this store. 
a bunch of applications that only run on Windows normally that don't run on Linux. However, users can easily install such applications like Notepad++ by simply running sudo snap install Notepad++. So how does this work? This works using Sommelier Core. Um, it, is a help, it is a bunch of helper tools. They're, they're a bunch of helper tools to uh, easily, ins easily create snap packages for Windows applications. Um, they do a whole bunch of things. They connect this Windows application to the actual Wine binaries. Um, they, you can use them to install a whole bunch of Wine tricks which modify the Windows environment so that the application runs correctly. They install a beautiful theme. Um, you can also use them to actually download the application for you. And so you can use them to run applications in Wine. And so how you use it is basically you update the snapcraft.yaml file to include a whole bunch of things of uh, uh, sommelier. So the first thing you do is add sommelier itself to your application, which you do by uh, including this bit. Then you add the wine content snaps. Um, you don't have to install wine yourself neither in the snap uh, nor users manually having to install Wine. This is all done automatically simply by connecting your application to the Wine content snaps. And then you add your application specific config. This can... <laughs> Test one, two. Test one, two. Yeah. This seems to be working. All right, so the third thing is that you add the configuration for your application itself. This can include, for example, the pod that would be the executable for your application uh, on Windows. You can just add it as uh, a Windows pod and a URL where they can download the installer, for example, or you can ship the installer in your application if you have the correct uh, uh, licenses for that. So the result is that uh, when a user installs your application, the first thing they will see is this dialog, which is preparing the Windows environment for your application. Um, then they will see the installer of your application which is running or they won't see the installer if you, can, if you have an installer that can run in silent mode. They will just see a loading screen and then they can play uh, uh, your game for example. This is uh, uh, a Windows game running inside of a snap. Let's uh, move on to the history of Windows Snaps. Uh, first, we had a game. Uh, Martin Wimpress, who used to run the Snapcrafters Community Initiative, he's very much into his racing games, and combined with his colleague, Alan Pope, they came together to make a, a snap of one of his favorite games, which we've already shown a screenshot of. Uh, that's called... Trackmania Nations Forever. So it's freely available so we can redistribute it as we need. Uh, it was very much a scratch your own itch issue for Martin and Alan. Um, <laughs> I didn't see you add that bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Martin has uh, lost a few tournaments and the snap we're blaming for it. Uh, there's a uh, We'll say there's a 
interface issue. <laughs> uh, so now you can install that and play anytime you want. Uh, from there, the community moved on to create an editor. This was uh, Taki, yes, uh, Taki Ra Raza, uh, who's quite a prolific Snapcrafter themselves. Uh, the editor itself is Notepad++. Uh, it's open source, but it only runs on Windows because it uses Windows-specific API calls. Um, among Windows enthusiasts, it's quite a popular editor. Uh, uh, and so, from these humble beginnings, we came together to create Sommelier. Uh, so, I think the primary packaging was built by Alan, Alan Pope. Um, it was mainly based on the Trackmania Nations Forever snap code. Uh, I added some of the uh, Notepad++ improvements that Taki added. Um, and I uploaded it to the Snapcrafters GitHub uh, organization. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a long day. Um, uh, and I, create, I set it to be a template, so anyone who wants to use Sommelier can just uh, click on a button to use this template on GitHub. Uh, other improvements that I added, uh, I added initial support for hooks, which allow you to alter the behavior of Sommelier during installation and startup time. Uh, I also added environment variable usage to control a bit more behavior. Uh, the available uh, hooks are snap post install, so anytime you want to run a hook, you can run it after the install is complete, after the snap has stopped, after the, uh, before the install is complete, and before the install starts. Uh, Merlin added some extra features. Uh, so Merlin helps to make the uh, launch script much more generic. Uh, that enables us to use it in a much wider set of scenarios. Uh, and Merlin also converted it to use the uh, wine content snaps that Taki also produces for us. Uh, and we've also now got the GNOME extension added, again, thanks to Merlin. Uh, so now we can snap all of them. Uh, we've got many wine snaps, as Merlin has already alluded to, and we're taking community contributions to add new features and bug fixes. So if you want to help out, then please do. So I'll give a little bit more information about uh, how some features in Sommelier work. Um, one of the examples is, uh, uh, one of the useful things is wine tricks. So if you're not familiar with how wine works, sometimes Windows applications running inside of wine need additional configuration options, registry changes, or need certain Windows uh, binaries that need to be downloaded and installed inside of the Wine environment for the application to work. And Wine Tricks is a popular project uh, in order to do that. So we, uh, 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 we uh, uh, created it so that you can use Wine Tricks very easily uh, inside of your Snap, uh, inside of uh, uh, for your application. And you basically do that by changing uh, environment variables in your snapcraft.yaml uh, file. So for example, some applications need Microsoft Core fonts. You can add that functionality simply by uh, adding core fonts in the uh, tricks environment variable, which is how a wine trick, uh, how, how wine tricks calls the actions. Um, you can also install multiple, take multiple wine tricks actions uh, by simply uh, adding a list of them, a space separated list of the actions. So for example, if your application needs um, the VC runtime of Microsoft or needs .NET, you can simply add those as tricks uh, to your snapcraft.yaml file. Um, in order to figure out what tricks you need, 
it's very useful to go to uh, either Wine AppDB or ProtonDB because a lot of the comments uh, 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 that are uh, associated with the listings of the applications, a lot of the comments explain what things you need to do in order to make your application work in Wine. And so those are the exact things you need to do then in order to make your application work inside of a snap. Um, as uh, Lucy already alluded to, you can also customize uh, uh, your, uh, uh, the, the script itself using hooks. So for example, if you have certain logic that needs to run before your application starts or after your application shuts down, you can simply create a bash script, put it in one of those folders, and then it will run at a certain point in, your, uh, 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 in, in the life cycle of the application. Uh, we also added a team. On the left, you see the default wine look, which is not very beautiful, which is based on how uh, Windows 95 looked. Um, but on the right, you see uh, we added uh, uh, the upstream light team uh, created by uh, this person uh, that is in one of the next wine releases will also become the default team for wine applications. But for previous releases, we added ourselves too. You can also turn it off simply by setting an environment variable. Um, we also add content snaps. Content snaps is a very easy way for us to make sure that the application doesn't take too much resources uh, or, uh, uh, on your system. Because a snap, it is a self-contained application. That means that any dependencies that it uses, even the, the wine runtime itself, uh, need to be packaged inside of that snap. We circumvent that by using content snaps. So you can choose a content snap with a certain wine version um, that will be installed separately. And any wine application on your system will use uh, that same uh, uh, content snap. Uh, so instead of the data being duplicated in each and every single application, it's actually uh, only once on your system. Um, we, all, we do the same with the runtime. Those are basically all the dependencies that Wine needs uh, in order to run. And we also do it with uh, GNOME, all the desktop integration bits uh, and the bits to make sure that uh, GPUs work and things like that. Uh, those are all also part of another content snap that most users already have installed on their system so that your application doesn't take too much resources. Um, there are a bunch of useful tools that can help you create wine snaps. Uh, the first tool is the universal silent switch finder. So it's, it's very easy, it, it, it's, it's very user friendly if a user simply clicks install this application and then the in application installs in the background. However, even though many installers have switches in order to make them install silently, um, they, they don't have that documented and there's not a standardized way to figure out uh, what those switches are, so you can run this program. However, Important to note here is that this program sadly does not run in Wine itself, so you need Windows or in a virtual machine uh, in order to run it. We also have Resource Hacker. Resource Hacker does run in Wine, and so you can simply install Resource Hacker on Linux by running snap install Resource Hacker, and you can use this in order to inspect Windows binaries in order to extract things like who created the, this binary, what is the license, um, uh, what is the icon for the binary, uh, very useful for creating snaps and figuring out what you're actually working with. Then uh, you can also change the registry. Uh, the sommelier project also makes this very easy. You just run the name of, so after you created the snap and you install the snap, then users can just run the name of your application dot wine space regedit, and then they have a Windows registry editor where they can change registry keys. You can use this yourself during development to debug certain things. And in the same, uh, in the, in the same line, uh, you can also start wine config simply by running the name of your app dot wine space wine config. Um, and you can use wine config, for example, to make Wine appear as other Windows versions. 
By default, Wine uh, makes itself appear as Windows 7, but you can also make it appear as older or newer Windows versions. You can also use that to change themes or to um, change certain dependency libraries. So there are various uh, tools that the Snapcast ecosystem provides that you can use to debug your Snap. So the first thing you want to try is uh, when you're building your Snap for the first time is to use Snap Try. So when you've got a build that completes, you can then build it with Snapcast Try. This uh, creates it in a special way so that the file system doesn't get packaged as a SquashFS file system, but actually gets put on your local hard drive as a folder. And then you can use snap try with the path to that folder. It's usually called prime, and it's usually in the folder that you execute Snapcraft from. Uh, when you do that, it will install the snap as though it was in a SquashFS file system, but it will be referencing the files that are in the prime directory. This allows you to modify any files in the directory so that you can experiment with any modifications that you need to try to figure out a, an issue that you're having. Uh, you can also start a shell inside of the Snap environment. Uh, this allows you to inspect the environment that the uh, Snap daemon sets up for your app. Uh, you can also check to see what the confinement is allowing you to access. So you can try accessing, say, files or devices that aren't uh, that you're not sure if you can access, and see if it, you get a permission denied. If you do, then you know that the sandbox is restricting you, and you probably need a new interface added. Uh, you can experiment with launching your app to see if it itself can launch. Uh, this enables you to get a complete log of how it's running. Uh, so you launch the shell with snap run dash dash shell and then the name of your snap. Uh, you can also use dev mode, which installs the snap as though it's confined, but all confinement enforcement is turned off. Uh, this enables you to use a program called Snappy Debug, which is available in the Snap Store. Uh, that is a terminal app that you can run alongside your app while you launch it. It will print onto the terminal any confinement rules that are being, uh, that are causing your app, or that would cause your app to not work if it was enforced. Uh, so a, a common way of running that is to r start your app in one terminal and have Snappy Debug running in the second terminal. Is that it? Yeah. Okay, that's it. Okay, so we're on to Q&A then. If you're uh, interested in following our work, our, uh, we also put our uh, Mastodon, uh, uh, what do you call it, Mastodon handles, Mastodon handles on there. Um, also take a look at the sponsor pages of some of the developers. Um, uh, some of these people are doing really important work, making sure that uh, all these wine snaps keep on running. Um, personally, uh, I like this project from the standpoint of running Windows applications on Linux, but I also really like this project because it allows us to preserve some older Windows applications that are normally incredibly hard to run. So for example, if you're interested in running very early uh, games or early age Windows software, uh, things like Command and Conquer, the original Command and Conquer. Um, there's very easy snaps now in order to be able to run that on a modern Linux distribution. All right, thanks for your attention.